Nessa girl, people can't take y'all ass nowhere without showing at, all right? No matter what your age is. Jocelyn don't did a whole performance on the biggest stage she'll ever be privy to. And what will she be remembered for? Whooping ass down to the thing. And no matter how old and seasoned you get, you ain't too old and above the fray to be petty. What am I talking about? Anita Baker and Babyface. Let me tell you something. Anita Baker is tearing our brother down to the Twitter. Y'all want to talk about it? Here it go. Now, Nessa girl, I know y'all don't see the videos, but Jocelyn and whooping big legs ass down to the ground in the back of the damn stadium. Down to the fight. Now, let me tell y'all something. The fight happened down here in Miami, and I wasn't there. It just goes to show how not plugged in I am with the fight world. Boxing and fights are not my thing. However, after looking at everybody that was there, I'm like, okay, maybe I need to get into it for the social aspect of it all and not necessarily the fight. But child, I'm glad my ass wasn't there because it ain't no secret. Me and Jocelyn don't really fuck with each other. We don't really like each other. Um, and that bitch wasn't finna whoop my ass to the back of the damn stadium. Girl, I was sitting down in my bed, minding my business like I always do. And while I scroll across this picture of Jocelyn with the little sundress on, bent over, whooping ass. It's a whole melee in the background, right? But see, that ain't what was even shocking to me. I mean, you know, I'm not disappointed that Jocelyn was fighting, yeah, but this what Jocelyn do. Bitch, I was shocked because one of my goddamn friends was in the video helping Jocelyn fight, kicking a damn girl in the head. I said, I, I, I said, I know this ain't who I think it is. Baby, I had to run the bike. I looked at it. I said, oh, hell no. Then at that point, that's when I had got a vested interest in what was all going on backstage. And is it me? Or did y'all see how Jocelyn slapped that white security guard man in his face three times? Let me tell y'all something. That white man is better than any man I ever be because I would have turned her ass every which way set loose. Then I would have sued my employer for uh, uh, workplace hazardous conditions that could have been prevented. And baby, they would have gave me six months paid leave or I would have owned the company. One or two things was going to happen. But baby, I was going to get something out of the deal. Jocelyn know who to slap because that man should have clean clocked her ass straight in her eye. The way that girl who she was fighting should have whooped her ass. But that's neither here nor there. So, I tested my friend. And I said, friend. Friend. I know you. You over 40, friend. This ain't what we doing. And my friend said, sis. She said, I was trying to break it up. And she said, you know. Fuck, I hate cameras. Y'all ain't see all of it. She said she was trying to break it up. She said the camera did not catch the part where they was jumping Jocelyn when Jocelyn was by herself. And then my friend said she only kicked the girl because the girl had bit her ankle. And she said I was trying to break them up. And when the girl bit my ankle is when I started kicking her or whatever. Okay, then we see the girl in the silver dress throw a drink on Jocelyn. So everybody was like, that's Big Lex. That's Big Lex. Now y'all know at my big age, I don't even know who the fuck Big Lex is. I am assuming this is some of this Zeus stuff got going on. I saw something about the girl saying she in Miami all the time. Jocelyn could pull up. And I'm guessing that's what Jocelyn saw or heard. And she ran up on her ass behind that stage. Now, in a typical Zeus, love and hip hop fashion, you know, I thought perhaps the fight would have been the fight and that would have been the end of it. Later on that day, 
A mug shot get posted with Jocelyn looking all types of hungover, makeup all smeared. Say Jocelyn has been arrested and charged with four charges. So here's where the T is, y'all. I called my friend. I said, friend, you not in jail, is you? My friend said, sis, no. My friend said, no, of course not. I'm home. And she said, believe it or not, Jocelyn is not in jail. Listen to me, y'all, because here is the T. She said, Jocelyn is not in jail for the fight that we saw behind stage at the stadium. She said, there was a separate incident that happened after that, that Jocelyn should have took her ass the fuck home, but she did not. My friend said she was home. She said Jocelyn did not go home. And as a result of the second incident that was not seen on camera, that's how Jocelyn caught them four charges. Now, here's the thing. I'm 39. I looked at Jocelyn thing. She's 36. We in the same age bracket. I always determine if I'm in the same age bracket with somebody by if we could have been in high school and walked the halls of the high school at the same time. If we could have been in high school in the same time, we are considered in the same age bracket. I think a lot of us come from places where if somebody try you, you're going to slap them in the mouth. You know, you're not going to let nobody try you to your face. I understand all of that. But I was on the, home, I was on the phone with my homegirl, Quisha, and we just busted out laughing because we were saying, do you know how embarrassing it would be at our big age to be caught on camera fighting. As I approach 40, I just could not imagine myself being on the camera twirling with some bitch. Now, I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna twirl a bitch, but I'm gonna be smart enough not to twirl on camera. And then you gotta look at and I guess this is where Jocelyn and a lot of other people and I differ. I look at what I do currently. I look at the different jobs that I hold. And I look at the trajectory by which where, where I'm going. All of that would be compromised if I was bent over somewhere twirling with the grass. Down to the ground. Behind the stadium. All on the blogs. Just twirling. But I guess when you work at a place where you're incentivized to fight and the fight will only add extra interest to your job and your paycheck, then it's okay. Iyanla Van Zandt said this best when she did Evelyn Lozada. She said, you are a bully amongst women and you were positively rewarded for negative behavior. And that's just it, right? Like, the more Jocelyn and these baddies girls and all these different girls in these genres fight, the more popular they get, the bigger their paycheck, the more people that watch the shows. And so, you know, I guess. I guess. You know, recently I've come to a place mentally where I've decided that the internet has become the great equalizer, right? And this, 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 remind me, y'all, I'm going to do another video. And the topic of that video is going to be about people having things or achieving status that at some point we feel like they didn't deserve because they didn't go to college or they didn't have a corporate job. And there are others of us who had to go the traditional route and feeling like these people don't deserve it because they got it easy. Y'all remind me that I got a deep video I want to do on that. But anyway, that being said, the internet has been the great equalizer, right? It's put people like Jocelyn, Big Lex, Tommy, and all these other people in a financial position that all things constant they would have never been in. And my thinking is beginning to evolve to a place where um, on one token, I'm happy, right? Because there used to be a time where where you from dictated where you could go. If you were from the projects, if you were from a, 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 a sordid past, if you didn't have the education, if you didn't have the pedigree, 
You didn't have access to millions. You couldn't buy Louis Vuitton. You couldn't lay out on yachts and boats. You couldn't be on private planes because why? You weren't deserving. You didn't have you didn't have the resources and or the tools to gain the money to gain that type of access to buy those types of things or to have those types of things and or experiences. But now with the internet, it has given people who have been systematically oppressed an opportunity to get all the things the rich white motherfuckers get by doing it their way. So in that regard, and I'll save the deep dive for that video, in that regard, I am happy for the Jocelyn's, the Tommy's, the Big Lex, the Rollies, whoever else, right? Because the world told them you'll never have it and they're proving the world wrong. The only place where I'm unsettled is while they are gaining individually, we are losing collectively, right? Because this is how we get painted. This still isn't a good look. And there still is a disproportionate amount of images like this going out of us. Or whatever the case may be. The second thing has nothing to do with anything that deep. And everything to do with having a young child. Anger is a temporary emotion. And I'm not finna let a couple minutes or a couple hours of anger cause me a couple months or a couple years of stress and connection. The biggest realization that I had to come to, um, there was a person and I vowed whenever I saw this person, I was going to beat their motherfucking ass. Like I had just had enough. And I vowed whenever I saw them, I was going to whoop their fucking ass at any damn cost. And then I had to realize the fallout from that is ultimately what that person wants. And they would win. And it reshaped my outlook on things, right? And here's my new philosophy. And this is why I'm now able to walk away. I'm not going to jail for a bitch I don't like. That don't make sense. Why would I give you that? Why would I give you my time, my freedom, my money? I ain't giving that to the state or to the county. I'm giving that to you. I'm not giving you that. So if anything... I'm going to go to jail for somebody I love. But I'm not going to jail for somebody I hate or somebody I don't like. That shit don't make sense. And I think when you view it that way, it helps you control yourself when you're dealing with bitches out in public. Mama, you can have all of that. You can say whatever you want to say. You can yell whatever you want to yell. You can post whatever you want to post. Just as long as you do it from over there. Now, you violate my personal space. That's a whole other situation. And at that point, I'm probably not going to go to jail because it's self-defense. But I'm not going to be out here twirling with no bitch I don't like just to end up in jail. That shit don't make sense. And then, Jocelyn, you got a daughter. You know, the person who was watching your daughter for the night, they was only expecting to watch your daughter for the night and turn her ass back in tomorrow. Now your ass the fuck in jail. And Stevie J somewhere driving Faith car stolen. Got an APB out on him. He His ass out there hiding from garage to garage in that lady car out in California. So where your baby at? Hopefully your man holding it down. Hopefully your village holding it down. But your baby just went a couple days or a day without seeing their mama. And that's the shit you got to be worried about. The risk of your baby going to CPS over a bitch you don't like. The risk of people putting you out, not allowing you in circles, canceling jobs, getting restraining orders over a bitch that you don't like. I'm not giving that much of my life to a bitch I do not like. Message! Speaking of a bitch that you do not like, baby Anita Baker and Babyface, the girls is twirling, okay? The girls is twirling and I'm here to tell you something. Babyface being too passive aggressive for my liking. And Anita Baker, she is losing. 
Somebody needs to get her phone from her because auntie is losing and baby face is playing Anita like a fiddle down to this internet and she is singing like a canary. Now, for those of y'all who are not plugged in, Anita Baker just set off a barrage of tweets that have indicated there is trouble in paradise. Let me pull up the tweets real quick because the girls had sent them to me. The Gross had sent me the tweets. So the, the first tweet I got that said, there is a white man behind these grown black men harassing me and gaslighting me and my fans. Because he can't take over this tour, he wants to destroy it. Kenny's crazy narcissist, call off your boys. And all the while, Babyface has been silent. And the beautiful thing about Babyface's strategy is when you've got one person barking and the other person is quiet, it makes the person that's barking look crazy. Even if, even if the person that's barking is in the right. So Anita Baker has gone on to say, dearest ones, you are not privy to the contracts. Yes, Babyface is a special guest, a support act on my tour. This false narrative of a co-headliner is creating unrealistic expectations and aggression from his fans towards me. He should tell you guys the truth. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I agree with Anita Baker in regards to this statement. Now, when they had the hiccup in New Jersey, where they had the technical issue, the show started two hours late, Anita came out, and Babyface did not get to perform Babyface sent out a tweet, and I'm not going to lie to you, it was a Donald Trump-esque Donald Trump -esque tweet. Because the way the tweet was crafted, it was so passive-aggressive, it was like, I apologize, but it's kind of her fault. It said something to the effect of, I was told a Miss, a Miss Baker needed to do her entire set or something like that. It sent the message that it was Anita's doing Anita came back and said that she had nothing to do with it and that it was a live nation that had something to do with it. I, my personal belief is that if Anita wanted Babyface to go on that stage, he could have. All right. I can tell by the tone of a lot of Anita's messaging that she is on this, this is my tour thing, which it is. It is. Where I think some of the fans are getting lost in the sauce is that they're going down this whole rabbit hole of, Babyface is a bigger artist than Anita Baker. Babyface is a legend. Child, please, people came. When I bought a ticket, I bought a ticket to see both of them. I came to see, I, I only came to see Babyface. Babyface is a bigger artist. Babyface don't wrote. Listen, I am not going to negate y'all feelings. When I saw that Babyface was uh, touring with Anita Baker, I thought the same thing. Then I thought maybe he was just only going to do a few dates. But here's the thing, y'all. Money is money. And while Babyface is big enough to headline his own tour and do his own thing, the reality of the situation is he's not. All right? And to Anita's credit, bigger artist or not, you signed up to be a support act on her tour. And like she said, so many of y'all have gotten caught up in this situation or this narrative that he's the bigger artist I don't care. You come into the situation expecting co-headliner accommodations and that's not what this is. And I honestly think to Anita's point, if Babyface cleared it up that he is playing second fiddle to Anita, it would adjust people's expectations when they get to this concert. Case in point, if he let it be known, I am a support act. This is her show. That if the shows were late, and time had to be cut, I think people would be less upset that it was cut from his act because they got a clear understanding of what it is. But the fact that Babyface won't clear it up suggests to me that his ego enjoys the puffery. It enjoys being stroked in this instance, not to mention that there still may be some tensions, or at this point, there's clearly some tensions between him and Anita Baker. Now, Anita is fed up. And she said to us, um... She says to us, out of the kindness and community, you gift them 200K worth of production that you pay for and still they complain and hold up the show and slander and villainize your name on social media and the press. 
hashtag master implantation. So there are some things going on in the background. And listen, I can already tell y'all from being in this business, it's a clash of egos. I can already tell you Babyface probably feels like he's doing Anita a favor by even being on this damn show and his team and this white man that he's that, that Anita's referencing is like, we're a bigger act, we're a bigger artist, you ought to be glad we're here helping to undergird your show and Anita is pushing back on some this is my show type shit. I am the queen of this and that's what we're experiencing. This fallout right now, now things got really petty and here is how you know Anita is upset. She's calling Babyface's supporters, Kenny's crazies, telling him to call them off. And then she put in one tweet, oh yeah, guys, and he hates Beyonce. Now that's when I was like, Anita's being petty because that was beyond intentional and she knew what she was doing. You know, at this point, Anita Baker's tour should just about be over. And I'm hoping that these two can work it out or if they not, if they can't work it out, Babyface, hop off and let somebody else hop on but i don't like to see our old school you know legacy acts like anita and our music powerhouses like babyface fighting and y'all know i got a special place in my heart for anita baker and and listen i believe every single word when the people say anita is difficult when the people say anita is rude when the people say anita have a nasty attitude i believe it i can still love her and i believe what they say about her to a degree um so I'm not saying this is all Kenny's fault, but what I am saying is that I don't like it. And the way Babyface is playing it, he's actually winning because he's letting the fans do the work. And because she keeps coming on social media with it, and because she has, we are predisposed to necessarily not like her or think she's difficult. People are blindly siding with Babyface's camp and are side-eyeing Anita. Anita people! Anita people! She needs to stay off of Twitter because... The reality of the situation is whatever transpired that led to these tweets had not made it to the general masses. To be honest, I don't even know what concert she's talking about or where she was at or what happened. Anita Baker people, Anita Baker people, take her phone and keep her off Twitter because she and these tweets are what brought this to our attention. Handle your scandal behind closed doors. Their contracts. Get the lawyers involved. Get Live Nation involved to mediate the situation. But stay off Twitter. Y'all, that's all I got. Ain't got no more for this subject. It's 10.07. I don't went to the gym already because I was up early. And none of my friends answered me so far about lunch. So y'all hoes just might get two or three videos from me today. i call y'all later. And if you new around these parts, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll call y'all later. Bye.